Well, the country awaited news this morning of General Stanley McChrystal's fate as the top commander in Afghanistan. The headlines out of our other unbelievable national news story got unbelievably worse. The initial indications were that uh, one of the vents, which is allowing the oil to vent so we, the cap will stay on, uh, was somehow might have been uh, dislodged by, uh, by coming in contact with an ROV. Coming into contact with an ROV, a remote-operated vehicle. Other than that containment cap, the, remember the cap that's been sitting on top of the leaking oil well since June 4th, siphoning off some of the gushing oil? Other than that... What we have down there to get the oil out of the water, what we have down there to try to contain it before it gets to the surface, is that suction tube. Suction tube is like a straw collecting a small fraction of the oil pouring into the Gulf of Mexico. We are now back at that incredibly lame point in the containment effort. That's it. That's all we've got. Because this morning at about 8.45 a.m. Eastern, one of BP's remotely operated vehicles jostled the containment dome. Dope! So BP said they had to take the dome off after it was jostled, thus bringing us back to the situation we were in before the dome. You may recall that the first time we tried a containment dome, it didn't work because there were icy slushy hydrates in it clogging it up. The robot jostling the new containment dome today apparently created that hydrates risk again. So they took it off. BP now says it's working to put the cap back on. If it's successful, that gets us back to the new normal, which is tens of thousands of gallons of oil leaking into the Gulf of Mexico every day. Joining us now is NBC News correspondent Kerry Sanders, live from Grand Isle, Louisiana. Yesterday, Kerry was out uh, near the site of the oil leak. Kerry, thanks very much for joining us. Sure, Rachel. Trying to get a handle on what happened today with this containment gap. Is that a relatively accurate description of what happened down in, in the Gulf this morning on the seabed? Indeed. And what we don't have is the actual understanding of why the ROV, the remotely operated vehicle, hit that cap. And was it being operated from one of the vessels that's on the surface, or was it being operated from one of the locations where they have a command and control back in Houston? The other question is, was it in part because of the fatigue that is setting in? As you know, it's a highly qualified, unique position, and they've been working very long hours. Was it simply a matter of fatigue when the person was moving the ROV that they wound up bumping, or was it an un uh, unexpected current in the water. There's a lot of things, but this is all part of that corexic where they're spraying in that dispersant. And so there's a lot of complications of what's going on down there. But as you so appropriately point out, what it means is, is if the estimate of 60,000 barrels every 24 hours is accurate, we're now at 50,000 barrels going directly into the Gulf, as opposed to what we had before this accident happened, a limited success, I should point out, where 10,000 was going up that straw to a ship on the surface called a Q4000. It goes into the back of that ship and they just combust it right there. They force air in and they burn it. And you see the black smoke. We saw it yesterday and they're eliminating it at the source. And then you had about maybe 27,000 other barrels that was making its way up to the Enterprise and is being captured by the Enterprise and the enterprise fuel there, the petroleum they're catching, that's being captured and taken to the refineries. So now we're at 50,000 barrels flowing directly into the Gulf of Mexico. What? And it's an ugly situation because... Go ahead, Rachel. I was just going to say, well, what's next in their effort to try to, to, try to stem that? I and mean, we've heard from BP just tonight that they are trying to replace that cap. If that happens, we're just back to where we were. We've still got tens of thousands of gallons uh, flowing into the Gulf, even if they're successful at resetting that cap, right? Absolutely. And, you know, uh, the cap is a little bit of good. It's not the solution. I mean, it, everybody has come to the conclusion that the only solution here is going to be those relief wells that are being drilled. If there is any positive news, and I, I got to tell you, I'm a little skeptical of a numbers game being played here. But if there's any good news, it is that those two relief wells are ahead of the schedule that was announced. One well's 40 percent ahead of the schedule. The other is 28 percent ahead of the schedule. But I suspiciously ask whether that schedule was 
already set back at a further date in mid-August uh, just so that they could then announce that they're ahead of schedule. Just asking that as a curiosity, I did not get an answer when I've asked it. But, you know, there's a little bit of a uh, there's a little bit of anticipation here that those wells being drilled down are going to get there by August. And if they don't, there'll be a huge disappointment. One thing I did learn, and I, I think this is really interesting, is that when they drill those wells, whichever one makes it there first, as that bit goes down and makes that turn, I've wondered how how are they going to actually hit it? I mean, it seems like it's a very difficult thing to do, so deep, to get it dead on. But inside the drill bit, they have a magnet. And the magnet is designed to seek the metal of the pipe. And so they believe they're going to get it on the first or second time, Rachel. NBC News correspondent Kerry Sanders, live from Grand Isle, Louisiana. Kerry, thanks for helping us understand this. Really appreciate it. Sure.